one thing we've been covering here on Man Man with the Show has been the streaming wars. Uh, we've talked about the Dark Horse, uh, you know, over at 2B TV. We said, pay attention, pay attention to what's going on. When it comes to streaming services, pay attention to the news of the streaming service. It, you know, you have many different companies going on. You have smaller free services like Tubi and Crackle, um, Midnight Pulp, uh, and many others uh, that are out there that offer a great amount of content. And they're starting to expand and they're starting to make deals, deals with like Lionsgate right now for new content, the new movies and specials to bring to their site, which are not going to be available on Paramount or Netflix or HBO Max. And this has been developing for quite some time. One of the main containers out there, of course, is Disney Plus. And the thing about it is, when you're looking at Disney Plus's product, their classic stuff is very good, obviously. If they don't have any editing to it or content warnings, which it has, which I'm upset with a couple of ones on there, that they have content warnings on the Guy Robinson Zorro. If you've not seen the Zorro TV series on there, which is a great TV series from, from Disney, when they made really good TV series. Of course, the Kurt Russell movies at the time, uh, the movie Tron, Black Hole. Yes, I said Black Hole is a good movie. It needs some love. And that's one thing that Disney needs to put money back into is to fix some of the, the errors in the movie, The Black Hole, and it could be a perfect movie. <clears throat> It is a good plot. It's got some good special effects already for its time period, but it needs love. And there are many other things on the old Disney cartoons, DuckTales, Gargoyles. Uh, you know, they, they have the Marvel stuff like the X-Men TV series, you know, from Fox and the Spider-Man TV series from Fox and many other things that have been there for many years uh, from, from, the, from the Fox line and from the Disney, Disney original collection. But, unfortunately, their newer programming, and you've seen this, the Marvel stuff, uh, the Star Wars stuff, has been pure garbage. Everything they've been putting out, you know, you've seen the Kenobi series, garbage. Uh, the Miss Marvel, garbage. Loki, garbage. I mean, it, all it is, is they're taking these characters, and, you know, I keep bringing up this little chart, this chart that brings up on here, that talks, this is what's in the writer's room, uh, what what to put in a, in a series and what not to put in a series. This is Taste Card 2.0. I keep saying this, people don't realize that we're going through a second Haze Code. It's a little different now, but it's the same thing that they did years ago that basically silenced a lot of film, that took film, some great stories, and twisted it. Now, if it wasn't in the past, if it wasn't for the skill of the writer and directors back then, some of the stuff wouldn't have been as good as it was because they took skill and they took chances to the situation. But stuff like The Big Sleep with Humphrey Bogart, uh, as good as you think that movie was, very. if you read the book, it's very confusing on the ending because uh, basically they, they left out the most important elements of the film itself and that's basically it was blackmail and pornog using pornography now I'm not saying that yeah there was supposed to be a nude scene in there but the thing about it is but that was the whole premise of the situation and they changed the ending they, I mean you say well they've changed more. no they changed the ending where it's become very confusing on who was the true villain but this happened with a lot of films once we got out of the Hays Code, the 1970s, 80s, and 90s was a fantastic time for broadcast television and film. People took some great challenges. Getting back to the streaming, now we've gotten to the point, like I said, there's a lot of bad stuff on Disney+. Plus. You know, they claim that they have the viewership, but they don't really, I mean, without someone, a third party like Nielsen to gauge what's going on. And I said this before, Nielsen is making deals with certain streaming sites like Tubi TV to gauge them so they can sell it to the sponsors. 
So there is a way of knowing what a site does, you know, how much viewership that they see. And then there are some sites outside of the country that gauge it themselves and they put out on paper what that particular show or movie has done on their sites. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But a lot of these other big companies, Paramount, Netflix, you know, and Disney, they don't, they said, well, we've been successful. We've had this amount of people watching. Was they, were they really truly? You know, we see this from the CW numbers. And we said this before with the CW, it's a horrible network. Next Star is buying them out and uh, they're buying them for nothing. They're taking on the, their liability. That's all they're doing. They're taking 75% of the company for just the, just for the liability on the liability cost. And as, as I said before, there are moments, dark horses and stuff like that, that's going to change the level of who's going to end up on top of the streaming wars. And believe it or not, here's one of the things. And the thing about it is we, this was from a story from about two, three weeks ago. And basically we've been hearing from overseas. There's been a lot of deals overseas, especially like in India which there's a lot of people in India, if you haven't noticed on there. I mean, currently in India right now, it's about 1.3 billion people that live there. And that's according to like 2020 uh, reports. That's a lot of people, a lot of viewers per se that are there. And you might say, well, why is that so important? Why are we focusing on India right now? Now, one thing about it is, like the United States, India does have their sports. Now, you may say, well, you're probably going to talk about soccer. No, no, no. Actually, no. Actually, that's only a small part of the situation. But the one major thing that could change the entire scope right now, and Disney has lost out to it already because of the deals they've made, is cricket. That's right, folks. Cricket could be one of the, and, the, and soccer could be the deciding factors on who will be on top of the streaming wars. Now, I have two stories for you. And uh, one of them is from the Indian News, the other one's from the LA Times. And I'm going to go through them real quickly for you here. And uh, this one, Disney could be down 20 million subscribers after losing IPL streaming bid. Few consumer products have been successful as Disney+. Plus. While well, Disney Company could lose as many as 20 million of its Disney subscribers after being outbidded for the streaming rights to the Indian Premier League, cr League cricket matches uh, just uh, recently. The estimate for Media Partners Asia means that the company may ha have trouble reaching its goal of as many as 260 million global Disney Plus subscribers by 2024, according to Vivek Kotu, Executive uh, Director of the research firm. IPL drives customer acquisition, he said in an email. It's regarding as entertainment, not just sports by Indian households, women and men. Few consumer products have been as successful as Disney Plus. The service, which offers unlimited movies and TV shows, garnered 10 million subscribers on its first day in 2019, if we can believe that, and boasted nearly 138 million at last count. Chief Officer Bob Chapek had made, made a bold forecast in late 2020, predicting that the company would triple its subscriber count in four years. Not really happening at that point. About 50 million more than one third of the wor worldwide subscribers come to Disney uh, plus Hotstar. Hotstar is what Disney plus is overseas in India and a couple other places. A product offered in India and other South Asian nations and cricket has been a driver of that. For months, investors have been debating whether the company will have to lower the forecast. Uh, the drumbeat began after week after the quarter, and you've seen them. Now, these numbers are currently at the end of last week, toward the end of last week, about around Thursday. Um, $96 a share at Disney. That, that's pathetic right now at the moment. You can see what it's been. It's been under $100 for quite some time now since that major drop that happened weeks ago. After Netflix reported its first subscriber loss in a decade in April, Disney shares are down 39% this year. Disney lost the cr cricket bidding war to a, to a group that includes Paramount Global 
and India Reliance Industries. While Disney lost the streaming rights, it, it retained the rights for the for broadcast on traditional TV networks, agreeing to pay nearly $3 billion over five years to broadcast the games. The company has some 70 channels in India distributed by cable and satellite TV operators. In a statement Tuesday, Disney said it can still it can still use those traditional channels to promote Disney Plus Hotstar. Subscribers to Disney Plus Hotstar pay only 76 cents a month. Think about that for a minute. 76 cents a month on the average for the service versus standard fee for about $8 a month in the U.S. for Disney Plus. That annualizes revenue less than $500 million, making it hard to justify the high yearly IPL rice fees. Chapek said in February that he didn't see a loss of cricket streaming rights impacting the long term. Disney Plus forecast is the company has had other content. It can offer Indian subscribers. It's not like we see that business evaporates if we don't get it, he said. Some analysts see an opportunity for the company to change its guidance with the cricket loss. It's important for Disney to use IPL reset expectations in a more manageable range, Barclays analyst Kena Velesquar wrote in a research on Tuesday. Now, the thing about it is, and this is another thing that, you know, we have another story concerning Disney as far as the theme parks coming up. Uh, Disney making a big, big error by dropping out of the Brightline project. And this is the things that they do. Dis Disney doesn't fight for them to realize in the end that this could change the demographics for them in India. They live on sports in India. The cricket, cricket is one of the big things out there. For both, like I said, for both men and women alike out in that country. They just live on that. And the thing about it is there are other countries that are also involved that play the cricket leagues as well. And just like, like uh, soccer, you know, people just are glued to these events. They, they are really glued to these events. And you have to remember the other half of this. Disney doesn't understand that, unlike Netflix, we'll use Netflix and also to be TV. There are movies and shows that they are putting on on these streaming sites. Disney is pretty much making their own stuff. You know, they tried to push Miss Marvel. They said, well, I'm uh, a Muslim character on the show on there, but that's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. You know, it wasn't popular on the video game. The video game lost, what was that, $65 million? I think it was the last time I saw it was $65 million on the, on the game alone. Um, you know, this wasn't going to be popular. In India, you know, you have, what was that, RRR movie, which is doing phenomenal, you know, getting great reviews and situation. That's the kind of stuff you have to bring to your um, viewers, your streaming sites. you got to bring on that. Hotstar does have some of that stuff on there, but not abundantly like uh, other streaming sites does. You know, they try to put, Disney tries to push their product in another country as well, the same way as they do here, thinking that they're going to get, get there on there. And this is the thought that they're, they're not thinking worldwide when it comes to that situation. There are certain subject matters that doesn't work well at all. This is why China has banned a lot of the Disney stuff. Or have censored a lot of the Disney stuff. What's been censored also in the Middle East as well. And in Indonesia and many other places. And they don't realize that the politics, the activism and all that doesn't work. Doesn't work well in their movies and their shows. And the thing is the sports was the thing keeping them alive in these districts. Even though they're still going to have the live thing. Understand, Tubi TV just just you know, acquired the rights to the broadcast rights for World Cup on on-demand services. That's going to bring a lot of viewership because remember, if you're here on this side of the world, okay, understand if you are a big soccer fan on this side of the world, this World Cup is in the other side of the world in, in the Middle East in Qatar, Qatar. And that's about an eight hour difference. 
between here and Qatar. So the games are about eight hour difference on there. By the time you, you see it, you're not going to be up overnight, three, four o'clock in the morning just to get these games. You'll watch it at the time that you're able to. If you have to go to work the next day, you're not going to watch it. You'll watch it when you get home and on-demand service will give you that. That's why some of these streaming sites don't understand. Not everybody is going to watch it on the first night. Big, big fans, yeah, you're going to get them to go. But you have to remember, not everybody is going to watch it on there because they, they, they have a life as well. You know, and the, and the viewership will come in later. You know, don't gear it. Don't be the first to, to show it. But be there when someone needs to see it and you got it. That's why q to cast TV is starting to get its foot finally into YouTube and some of the others. You know, a lot of guys pulling in breaking news. Most of our videos clip in a little bit later. And that's how we've been getting our viewership. Now that some of our subscribers, um, we've increased, uh, they're coming back earlier to grab a lot of our videos because now they know we're here. See, that, that's the thing. They just don't realize where they're losing out. They're losing out on the later viewers, not the early viewers, the later viewers. And this is a constant basis. The other half of this, and I'm just going to touch briefly on this, is Apple TV now will become the new streaming home of MLS. That's going to push them up a bit. MLS is still popular. And this is out of LA Times. Major League Soccer has awarded the exclusive global streaming rights to, it, to its games to Apple in a 10-year deal, further cementing the tech giant's foray into live sports. With the, pack, with the package announced Tuesday, the MLS... This has become the second major sports league to enter the media rights agreement with the Cuperotino based company. Apple landed it in an exclusive package of Friday night Major League Baseball contest that began this, this season on Apple TV streaming, uh, the streaming platform. The deal, the terms of which has not been disclosed, but is reported in the range of $2.5 billion over the entire contract, is also another significant migration for, of live sports from TV to stream to streaming platforms. Amazon has NFL football, uh, which is Thursday night football, starting on the upcoming season and exclusive local rights to 20 uh, New York Yankee games. Soccer has been seen as a prime target for streaming services. The sports lacks its broad appeal in the US of other major professional leagues, but it does have a passionate fan base that is younger than those of for other events. For its MLS deal, Apple is creating a new subscription service to present the matches and related content such as highlight shows, replays, and whip arounds to live action through, throughout the league. For the first time in the history of sports, fans will be able to access everything from a major professional sports league in one place, Eddie Q, uh, Apple Senior Vice President of Services, said in a statement. It is a dream come true for MLS soccer fans and anyone who loves sports. No fragmentation, no frustration, just flexibility to sign up at, of one convenient service that gives you everything, MLS, anywhere, anytime you want to watch. Now, understand, and you can go, there's more toward this article. You can go look this up. With the Apple end of it, that's going to give ESPN some major trouble. And you know who's own, owner of ESPN? Disney. So basically, you have situations from other streaming sites buying into sports heavily, spending billions of dollars, taking away Disney's sports channels, which is, like I said, ESPN on there, from the stuff that they're airing. ESPN has been dying out slowly. I mean, it's been on life support for years because it's become such a political hotbed where they're telecasters are just literally just talk, just spewing out politics and not sports. People don't want to see that. I've eliminated ESPN. I don't have, ESPN is no longer on my cable service. It's no longer, I don't subscribe to Disney Plus. The uh, Disney Plus package that gives me D Disney, ESPN, and Hulu all together. All I have left is Hulu. Because I like some of the stuff on Hulu, especially the anime stuff, because I'm able to get some of the anime stuff on there, like Spy X Family and uh, 
uh, sh the Shield Hero. I'm able to watch that and some other stuff that's on there. And there are some movies that my wife does enjoy and some of the show, some of the old shows. I love watching MASH on there. But as far as the sports part of it, the situation, you got Tubi, you've got Paramount who's gone into this, Apple TV, and many others that are buying out sports contracts. Fox is not out of this. They're still, you know, like I said, World Cup coming to Tubi TV on demand, free, free. Understand, F-R-E-E. -E. You know, it's the commercials that are paying for it. Understand that. And then you have many other things that are coming across. Mostly what's going to be left of the scale of broadcast television, and I think it's going to be classic television. Because that's the only thing that's really making a dent in broadcast television. You know, you have MeTV, Decades, Antenna TV, uh, Heroes and Icons, all those channels that have, you know, people love Spengoolie on there, the Saturday morning cartoons and stuff like that. And the thing about it is that's growing outward. That is growing very, I mean, you've got main TVs in the top 25 as far as broadcast networks. That's pretty good for a channel that's just showing classics. This is what broadcast television is headed toward. You know, because th there are people that are tired of the rhetoric with the, some of the newer stuff that's being broadcast on streaming. You know, the classic stuff is what's in is still. The great sports, the classics, I mean, cricket, you wouldn't think. Cricket would be the biggest, one of the biggest things that could hurt Disney in the end, in the long run and in the streaming wars. Think about that for a minute. And the same thing with soccer. Who knows what next that they'll grab off of this. There's so much thing. I mean, could you imagine, you know, even for, for you know, ESPN that they lose pool, and, you know, losing the eight ball tournaments, the bowling tournaments, all the little stuff that in between that certain people like, and it gets turned over to maybe Tubi or Crackle or one of these other sites. You know, it's, it's going to be the end of ESPN eventually down the line. Fox knows, you know, that basically everything's going to online. So they're doing their best to keep everything on Tubi. And that's down, down the line. I mean, you could probably end up watching a live, ML, you know, a uh, live uh, baseball game, NBA. You know, there's still a lot more sports out there that contracts are still up for grabs. So comment freely below. Subscribe, like, share. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you for tuning in and bye-bye now.